Well, with EPA, again, our mission being to protect public health in the environment, all of the information, all of the stuff that we do is based on our science. So it's based on the data that we collect in the field, either through observation or for sample analysis and collection. So really to make sure that we have sound data that is defensible, we provide field work, inspections, data analysis, data evaluation and interpretation to make those sound scientific decisions. EPA must collect data with a purpose. Data must be quality assured so we can base decisions on it. Quality assurance is it's a system management activities that are there to ensure the usability of data and that it's suitable for its intended use. So you implement uh, things like planning, scoping, uh, quality control, assessments to ensure that, that the data you produce at the end is suitable. So for example, if we have a site or a project where they need some sampling taken, uh, we will go out and collect samples in the field, be they either soil, air, or water samples. We can then bring those samples back to our regional laboratory and analyze them for any type of variety of different uh, chemical or biological contaminants. The Walton and Lonsbury Superfund site, like a lot of our sites here in the region, uh, is considered a legacy site, meaning that it existed prior to the advent of a lot of the environmental rules. It began operations in 1940 as a hard chrome, an industrial chrome facility. We have impacts to groundwater, impacts to soil, impacts to surface water, and impacts to indoor air. Well, ecological risk assessment is the process of determining what harm might come to plants or animals, fish, birds, from contaminants that have been released at a site. Well, the Walton and Lonsbury site has, as one of its biggest features, a groundwater plume of hexavalent chromium, which is known to be very toxic to things that live in water and sediment. And that plume discharges to a stream called Bliss Brook. It was really very high concentrations, and we needed to do direct toxicity studies to see whether uh, there was toxicity in Bliss Brook and how far downstream it extended. And we did that looking at the sediment at the bottom of the brook and also surface water. We did toxicity studies on both. We had uh, encountered some unexpected results of petroleum in one of our uh, soil borings. And uh, wanting to get some additional information on that in a short period of time, uh, I requested field support. The GPRO uh, which is a trade name, it pushes rods into the ground and it, we've gone up to 70 feet to put in groundwater wells to collect water samples. We've also used it to go as deep as 60 feet to collect soil samples. Walton and Lonsbury, we've used it there to identify underground source of oil that they thought was coming from an old tank. At a lot of our sites where the groundwater is, is relatively shallow, you can get uh, a phenomenon referred to as uh, vapor intrusion, where you can get these volatile compounds evaporating out of groundwater and entering into homes. At the Walton Lawnsbury site, we did sub-slab vapor intrusion type samples where I could go in, take a grab syringe sample, and inject it into my GC, and we can get uh, results immediately to see if there's a source of contamination in a certain location. Uh, in someone's basement. So the mobile laboratory, uh, our philosophy is you're able to take a lot of samples in a short amount of time and from those results you can decide where to take your full protocol laboratory samples. To this date at Watton and Lonsbury I have done indoor air sampling at residential properties. We were looking for TCE and PCE, the primary contaminants of concern there. Each home we set up a basement sample, we set up a first floor canister sample. Uh, once the samples leave the site, we put them on a chain of custody and we bring them back to the lab here where they're logged in and then our chemists will perform the analysis. It is project critical to have a good team. I rely on OEME substantially at, at all my sites, but, but Walton and Lonsbury really highlights that. At the Palmer River, the states of Rhode Island and Massachusetts and their citizens have concerns about nutrient pollution. We are sampling for water quality at various stations along the, the whole watershed of the, of the Palmer River. We're trying to track down the source of, of started out as bacteria issues, but now we're looking at nutrients here too. Specifically, um, th there are some, some smaller watersheds 
that are very high numbers here, and others are, seem to be okay. Rhode Island DEM got involved with this river because the shellfish grounds downstream of the Palmer River in the saltwater Palmer River are polluted for bacteria. And a couple years ago, we had gotten a lot of citizens' requests about what the status of that was. EPA Lab's been instrumental. Not only did they say yes, they've also gotten involved in Mass DEP, um, NRCS has been involved, and other agencies as needed. So we've we started with looking at the entire watershed, and we've narrowed it down. So now we're doing a very um, detailed analysis of the lower Palmer River. After samples are collected, they are put on a chain of custody and brought to the lab for analysis. To begin, the scientist makes a dilution. So I'm going to take 10 mils of this sample and I'm going to bring it up to 100. Once it goes through the sealer, I'll be putting it into the incubator at 35 degrees. And if it turns yellow like this, that means bacteria is there, but it doesn't mean E. coli. So I would have to go further and check and see if anything is fluorescent. And we do have some fluorescent wells, which means positive for E. coli. Today we'll be analyzing Palmer River samples that we've been receiving all summer long and we will be analyzing them for nitrate nitrite, uh, so that is a combined form of nitrogen and digesting the same set of samples for total nitrogen. What we'll do is take that sample, uh, log it out of sample login, bring it to the lab, check that the, the sample is in the correct condition for the analysis, uh, then we'll take it through our tests using EPA methods. The analysis helps EPA and its partners identify where nutrient pollution might originate. It's a complicated watershed because you could have squash on one month and then you have cattle on the same plot of land too. So it's been really complicated to, to pin down a, a point here. Sewage pollution in surface water has been a challenge for New England for decades. The lab helped develop a tool to test surface water for human waste, a possible indicator of infrastructure failure. Peter's a chemist at the lab that um, I worked with to develop um, sort of a different take on a pharmaceutical method so that we could focus solely on those pharmaceuticals that we believe would be most associated with human sewage. And so we could collect water samples in the field. I bring them up to Peter and he runs them. What we do here is we extract the samples and determine whether there's human source compounds in them, um, such as acetaminophen, Tylenol, caffeine. Those source tracking compounds identify that there's a component of human waste in those water samples. We'll bring the bacteria data to a town or municipality. We can definitively identify that there is a source of human waste, that there is a broken sewer main. The lab's analysis is critical for our work because it basically provides the evidence that we would use if we ever had to go to court. The importance of, of having good data and good science is, is, is paramount. You can't have it any other way when you're basing cleanup decisions that, that might cost millions of dollars. Some of the decisions we make require communities to put in very expensive infrastructure. So we want to make sure that we're making those decisions based on the best and most sound science that we can have.